Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. State cattle organizations are a valuable partner with NCBA. So today, we'll highlight some of our favorite beef industry stories state by state. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Auctioner. Thanks for joining us. Each week, we travel across the country to bring you the best cattle industry news, information, and education. But we gotta admit, some stories really stand out from the crowd. So today, we're gonna take a look back at some of the favorite stories we found as we worked with state cattle organizations. Now, we love highlighting the good work being done by cattle producers in and around their communities. Reporter Jill Sheridan has more on a great event put on by the South Dakota Cattlemen's Foundation to help provide hunger relief to those in need. Cattle producers work hard every day to provide a high quality protein that feeds families around the globe. But often, the need for that food is greatest close to home. South Dakota beef producers recognized this and decided they could help. Hunger does start in your backyard. You know, a lot of us, because we have beef so abundantly available to us, we never think about that. But when you go beyond, you really find the need that's out there. When we first looked for what we needed in this state back when we formed the foundation, we went and interviewed a number of different uh, organizations to try and find a partner that could best fit the needs of the state. And when we sat down with uh, Feeding South Dakota, it was just a perfect fit. There is a glaring need uh, for protein. Protein is the hardest thing for a food facility to keep on the shelf. We know that about one in nine uh, individuals in the state of South Dakota are considered to be food insecure. Uh, more alarming number is that one in six of those are children. We're distributing over uh, 14 million pounds of food a year to uh, help in the fight against hunger in South Dakota. And when Matt told us only 4% of that was animal protein, uh, we knew that we could help. It was a very logical decision to make and a very logical pitch to the industry because they work so hard to tirelessly provide a very nutritious product. We've been really excited to partner with Feeding South Dakota, but part of their challenge is that their food dollar buys a lot of carbohydrates and snack food and cereal and stuff pretty cheap. But when it comes to supplying protein in their diet, it's something that's really hard to come by. And so they didn't have any designated funds really to do that specifically. Once the plan of giving money to Feeding South Dakota to purchase beef for their food pantries was set, the foundation board member sat down and came up with an idea for a community-wide event to help raise those funds. The next step to providing Feeding South Dakota with the funds to procure beef uh, is really where the idea for the Primetime Gala was born. And in 2014, we, uh, we planned that thing for the first time, having no idea what we were doing. The first year, we set a goal to raise $100,000. And uh, I'm proud to report that after a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, uh, we, we donated $115,000 the first year. The Cattlemen's Foundation's Primetime Gala is probably the event by which all other fundraising events are measured by in the state of South Dakota. I think it's exceeded the expectations of both the Cattlemen's Foundation, us as a nonprofit, and probably even the community in the state. I mean, I think it truly is the premier event that, that, that happens in the state of South Dakota. Um, I can't think of another event where they're going to have a banquet and they're going to provide steaks to 15 or 1,600 people at a whack and then follow that up with a headliner concert. The one thing that we've been blessed with from the beginning is the sponsors, and they have stepped up to show that they support this industry. And then along the way, we added in a huge donation with Billion Motors giving us a Chevy Duramax pickup, brand new for a five-year deal. We added EB uh, giving us a trailer and it's just exploded. So everybody has really responded to the need because they see us giving the dollars back. So what we decided to do was donate a stock trailer that would be auctioned off with uh, all the proceeds adding into the event. Every year, it, we call it our Primetime Gala Special Edition. It's not just a normal stock trailer. It's got lights, it's got paint, it's got aluminum wheels, but in the same breath, it's got all the options that ranchers and farmers need on their stock trailers. Sure. Just in a, wrapped in a cool package. This 
This year, uh, there's no doubt that we will eclipse the million dollar uh, raised mark in uh, funds for feeding South Dakota. The industry as a whole has taken a lot of pride that this is where we are in providing that protein today. In addition to the milestone monetary donation, the Primetime Gala also provides an opportunity for beef producers to come together for an evening of camaraderie, not only with each other, but also with consumers from around the community. It's the cattle producers of South Dakota coming to our largest, our largest city, interacting with, uh, with the crowd here. As Sioux Falls continues to expand more and more, um, we have people that are farther and farther removed from being a part of a farm and ranch. And so we uh, get to interact with those people. Maybe a, a nice unintended benefit or consequence of starting this program, in addition to donating all the great beef to Feeding South Dakota. I think what producers really identified the most with is it wasn't just providing money and it wasn't providing just any ordinary food, but it was really about providing the thing that they worked the hardest to produce. We're so incredibly grateful to have this partnership because of what they have helped provide to us monetarily that ultimately then enables us to provide the same kind of products that they're raising. Uh, my hat's off to them uh, for helping uh, feed the world and for helping us feed South Dakota. Reporting from the Primetime Gala in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, I'm Jill Sheridan for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. One of the most important things cattlemen and women can do is join the fight to protect our industry by becoming a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. It's easy to do. Just call 866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org. NCBA has long been a supporter of the voluntary branded beef labeling programs. Brian Baxter has more on how the Kentucky Cattlemen's Association developed a branded ground beef product that increases the value of coal cows for its members. When Kroger was looking for a locally raised and sourced ground beef product to carry in their Kentucky grocery stores, they turned to the Kentucky Cattlemen's Association for help. Essentially, Kentucky Cattlemen's Ground Beef was created to be another market opportunity for marketing cull cows in the state of Kentucky. We saw an opportunity with Kroger as they came to us wanting a ground beef product that was completely Kentucky and truly Kentucky proud. They didn't really understand how to go about it or had the time and capability, so they came to our office and we got to work right away, established Beef Solutions as a company, and thus created Kentucky Cattlemen's Ground Beef. What we're doing is buying the cows from producers in Kentucky. It starts here and ends here. So we buy them in Kentucky, they're harvested in Kentucky, and then they're sold back to the consumers in Kentucky. We know where they've come from, and the consumer can be very confident in what product they're getting. It's an opportunity for us to add value to our farmer's income. We are a cow-calf state. Most of our calves get on the truck and they go west. What's left is a cow. We take that cow and that's what we use for our product. So we got a small batch, whole animal product. It's been very, very well received. In order for Kentucky producers to sell their cull cows into the Beef Solutions Program for processing, they're required to adhere to the gold standard of care requirements that were created to verify the cattle and to provide consumers with the information they want. So part of the Beef Solutions Program is uh, what we call the gold standard of care. And that's part um, that the producer agrees to whenever we're doing the enrollment forms. So part of it is the beef quality assurance protocols that everything, all the, the shots and everything are given correctly. The cattle are treated humanely and have access to water and all those things. And all the cattle have to be verified as a local Kentucky product. So we verify using the producer's records that those cattle have been on a farm for a minimum of 60 days. So that gives us a traceability component that we know the consumer is looking for. Another unique aspect of the Kentucky Cattlemen's ground beef product is the label. One of the hardest pieces to this whole puzzle that I don't think any of us were really prepared for was labeling. So you want to make sure that you're standing out in a meat case because the beef section of a meat case is ever expanding. So we found through consumer research that the black and the gold really resonated with consumers and customers and they would gravitate towards that. On the back of the package, we really wanted to focus in on the nutritional information. Beef oftentimes gets lost within that nutritional conversation, so we wanted to take a different twist on it and put the cooked values as well as the raw values. Traditionally, you see just the raw values, but there's a whole other story to be had once you've cooked a product. The program has not only added profit opportunities for Kentucky cattle farmers, 
but created a product both consumers and producers can be proud of. So since we started production of Kentucky Cattlemen's Ground Beef in March of 2018, we have packaged over 465,000 pounds of ground beef within that time frame that has ultimately impacted over 100 farms here in the state of Kentucky in 41 different counties and really has resulted in over $810,000 in farm gate sales, which is money that we've paid producers for the purchase of their cows for the program. The value is huge, so we modeled that program around cull cattle for a reason. Uh, there, there was not a strong market for cull cattle in Kentucky, so we wanted to be able to capitalize on that lack of a market and give those producers some incentive to, to put those cull cows through our program. So the biggest benefit is we pay the producers based on the hot carcass weight of that animal. There's a lot of value for a producer there. They can take them and put them through this program and then also you know, help create that sustainable beef and that local product that consumers are looking for and they can be part of that local food chain. It's been such a great blessing to have this truly Kentucky product in the shelves. Granted we're not the first Kentucky product to be in a retail setting and I'm sure we won't be the last especially when it comes to the ground beef sector but really what it's meant is people can get excited about going to the grocery store picking up that product and really holding something that their neighbors down the road probably put some thought and care into. And I think having a product like this in the grocery store for them to latch onto and get reinvigorated and rally around agriculture has been a wonderful opportunity for them and they get excited about it. From the Bluegrass State, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. If you'd like to learn more about what's happening with NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, you can find us on Facebook. Be sure to like our page and we'll keep you updated with photos, details on upcoming shows, and much more. And it's a great way to connect with other cattlemen and women all across the country. So check us out on Facebook. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll head to the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally for a look at a high stakes battle to grill the best burger. Plus, see how the Nebraska cattlemen are working to ensure beef is a part of school lunches in their communities. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Getting to run a family farm is a dream come true. When you can grow good grass, there's opportunity to grow plenty of weeds. We want to use the tools that will help us do a better job. I would like the legacy to be that we took really good care of the land and we truly did it as a passion and we did our very best for the right reasons. We didn't just design the 6M tractors with you in mind. We designed them with you by our side. The new 6M tractors from John Deere. Reimagined by you, for you. With improved visibility, better maneuverability, and more ways to customize so you get everything you need and nothing you don't. Experience the new 6M at your local John Deere dealer. We've already talked a bit today about how state cattle organizations use the beef checkoff to help grow beef demand. Now, let's check out a beef promotion in South Dakota where chefs competed to see who could grill the best hamburger. Russell Nemitz has more on the Sturgis Burger Battle. Sturgis, South Dakota, where you'll find not only tens of thousands of bikers, but also beef. And 2018 marked the second year that the South Dakota Beef Industry Council has partnered with the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. The event size and scope make it an attractive opportunity to ride in with a strong beef message. When it's all said and done, we average right around a half million people, and we are one of those events that has a worldwide reach. So. People in Asia who might not have tasted American beef yet are going to be excited about it because they have seen something from the rally and people around the world really want that thing, whatever it might have been, that was at the rally. Uh, we have uh, social media reach that will reach into Asia, it'll reach into Europe, and it reaches all across Canada and uh, North America. You know, one of the things that we always look for as a Beef Council is those opportunities to really engage. 
And when you look at the Sturgis rally and you look at the numbers of the people that we have here and where they come from, we have consumers from all over the world at the rally. When you look at the South Dakota beef industry as a whole, we've got about 4 million head of cattle in South Dakota. And with that, we put together probably about a $4.5 billion impact to the state. And so for us, Sturgis plays that vital role. It brings that consumer here. We're connecting our, our egg industry to our consumer, and I just think this is a great venue to do that. This is our second year involved in the, in the rally. Uh, it seemed very positive, the feedback that we got back from last year's rally. Uh, you meet so many different people from all over the world, and for us in South Dakota to reach that many people this local is an asset or an opportunity, I should say. I want them to see the producer side of this, that we are a family deal. We take great pride in what we do. We love what we do, and we love the animals that we raise, and we feel we provide a great product for them. We need to reach people on both ends of, the, of this country and assure them that we have a safe, nutritious product and that they can have confidence in it. In addition to identification as the official meet of the rally with signs, banners, social media mentions, and other promotional elements made possible by the beef checkoff in South Dakota, this year a burger battle was held in the heart of the events with teams competing for bragging rights and more. Last year after this event, we knew that we wanted to have a little more hands-on focus with our consumers. So we sat down with the Sturgis crew and we, and we you know, kind of incorporated this burger battle. And we talked to them about how we felt something like that could not only add to our practices, but also to them as a whole. And that has been a phenomenal experience because a lot of these chefs that are coming in to participate in that burger battle are, are real strong influencers for us. It's very exciting. It, uh... I didn't think that there would be this much uh, anxiety and excitement in it, but uh, it's fun. It, it was it was unique, you know. Dad, Dad and I both have been chefing for over 20 years at the restaurant, so it's always neat to get a surprise ingredient in it and then just start brainstorming and figuring and working together. So uh, I think everything came out quite well. The winner of this battle gets to compete in the World Food Championship for a prize of $100,000. So what that has done, because we have teams that have come in from Los Angeles, we have teams that have come in from Chicago, Atlanta, New Orleans, uh, so all across the United States. And for the producer who helped fund this promotion, the value is in seeing their product, beef, being the focus of unparalleled positive attention at the 78th annual Sturgis Rally. People not only from South Dakota, U.S., but the world. There's just so many different uh, demographics of people that are here that attend the rally. And if we can get in front of them and show them the product that we can produce in South Dakota, it's tremendous. Okay. We have a lot of people that aren't part of agriculture anymore, so they don't quite understand where their food comes from. So it's nice to bring them out into to what I call cattle country and, and show them where it's coming from. As a producer, we work so hard with genetics, nutrition, health, in the production of our product, the cattle. When we market them, we can't stop there. We have to be a promoter of this product. We have to continue all the way to the plate. We have to promote this and get it out to the American people. We're out promoting beef and what better place than a rally like this in South Dakota? You get 500,000 people, you can't just go somewhere and get that. In Sturgis, South Dakota, I'm Russell Nimitz reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. The Sturgis Burger Battle is just one example of the great work that state associations do all across the country. You can find many stories celebrating those efforts on our YouTube page. We also have educational segments, producer profiles, and of course, Baxter Black. So check us out at youtube.com slash cattlemen to cattlemen. America's cattle producers are not only committed to providing a highly nutritious protein to families across the world, but also to those in their local communities. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Jill Sheridan visited Nebraska to learn more about how a community project is putting beef on school lunch trays. 
At Thayer Central Schools in southeast Nebraska, students are finding beef is what's for lunch, thanks to the Titan Beef Boosters program. Here in Nebraska, we consider ourselves the beef state, right? So perhaps our greatest resource is beef and the people who raise it, our farmers, our ranchers, and our producers. So uh, we want to really bring that back to these communities and show kids that it's those local producers in their communities who work hard every day to put that fresh beef on their trays. Titan Beef Program came to life in, uh with an, as an idea in the summer of 2015, uh, I was approached by a local producer, Rob Marsh. We sat down together and got to talking and thought if we could get maybe 24 to 30 head of cattle donated, we would be able to sustain this program for three years. I did read a, an article in the Nebraska Cattleman Magazine that a, another school had tried something like this and, and they were having some results. And I, I thought, wow. But then it really made me kind of focus on I'm a father, I have four daughters, four young daughters, and we concentrate on what, what they eat at home, but we as parents have no idea what they're eating during the day. I thought, I, I want to help. So Titan Beef Boosters and the local beef program here in Hebron at Thayer Central was really brought from the community and from the ground up. And they were basically the groundbreakers in a local beef program in the state. And from them, so many more have learned and been inspired to develop their own programs across the state. If we want to help our kids eat better, we have the best protein there is right outside our door here. And I thought, what better way just to put it all together? Um, so I really wanted to just truly help all of our kids in our school district. So that's, I just started making some phone calls to some other producers. A lot of them were on board with the idea right away. The response to the idea of getting local beef into the schools was immediate and strong. People were eager to help make sure beef is on the menu for school lunches. Once we started telling people about it, it was not a problem to have beef donated. It was phenomenal how the community came together to make this such a huge success and it has just grown. It's been fantastic to see people that are willing to donate um, money and the meat itself and even the local grocery stores um, donated space to store the meat. The Department of Education has been a really great partner in this program. That's been encouraging to help a lot of schools uh, bring this program into their local communities. And then with the Nebraska Beef Council side of things, I like to go out and talk to a lot of these different schools and I work with their food service staff um, and basically bring in some of their recipes. So when new schools come online or kind of curious about how they can utilize all these fresh beef products, we have tried and true recipes that we can hand them um, and give them some great options to provide for their students at the school lunch program. Our kids are eating awesome. They're cleaning up their trays. That's the, the biggest thing I heard from uh, the kitchen staff the first couple months into this was that not only are we having a lot better lunch participation, but they're cleaning their whole tray up. Since starting the program, uh, there's been a lot more kids that eat lunch here. Um, they seem to be excited about lunch instead of just, eh, it's just a school lunch. Now it's, it's beef day, one of the menu items that they love. Now four years after the program first started at Thayer Central, Nebraska Beef in Schools has expanded to more than 65 school districts. And with help from the Nebraska Beef Council and the Beef Checkoff, the program delivers students not only high quality beef, but also positive messages about beef nutrition and how cattle are raised. Now the Beef Council, they're going with the nutritional fact of it and helping us promote it and gets them out into the schools to help promote it and tell them how good beef actually is. The so Nebraska Beef Council uh, really found value in providing educational materials to help connect with the students who are consuming in the cafeteria to educational opportunities in the classroom. I like to educate the kids, you know, in classes we talk about how beef is raised and then um, it's nice to make that connection to, well, it's Tuesday or Thursday, what are you having for lunch? Uh, well, you're having beef. And so this is how it's raised. Today you're eating Thayer County beef and it was donated to you and it's good. You know, it really is a win-win. It helps schools uh, with their proceeds and costs and, and, and gets young kids excited about eating beef and, and enjoying that. And, it, you know, it's a great source of pride for the producers and hopefully, you know, promotes that for them as well and makes their product that much more viable. Great beef donated to a great cause, helping to provide for the next generation of beef consumers. In Nebraska, I'm Jill Sheridan for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. You can check out the Beef It's What's for Dinner website 
for a great interactive experience. You'll find things like recipes, information on beef cuts, and nutritional information at this one-stop shop for all things beef. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll show you a special event in New Orleans that helped promote beef and beef recipes to food bloggers. Don't go away. We'll have more right after this. In the world of cattle vaccines, when you see fewer reactions, you'll notice healthier cattle and higher profits too. Because sometimes good protection is about what you don't see. Protect your productivity with cattle vaccines from Merck Animal Health. Proven to cause fewer reactions. You'll like what you see. Our trusted portfolio is just one more way Merck Animal Health works for you. Talk to your veterinarian and visit CattleFriendlyVaccines.com to learn more. If you'd like to know more about NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and have an opportunity to support our effort to create valuable news, information, and education just for cattle producers, then check out our website, cattlemen to cattlemen.org. Recently, NCBA, as a contractor to the Beef Checkoff, hosted a pop-up restaurant event in one of the U.S.'s great food cities, New Orleans. It celebrated beef while bringing together food bloggers from all around the country. Brian Baxter has more on this fun and informative event. Skilled chefs and beef as the star of the menu proved the perfect recipe for a Beef It's What's For Dinner pop-up event that brought food bloggers from around the U.S. to Tableau, a top New Orleans restaurant. I love New Orleans and one of the first things I think about when I think of New Orleans is the food scene here. So it's perfect to have a Beef It's What's For Dinner event right here in the middle of such a cool foodie scene. So events like this are very important to us as producers because it helps us reach those people that might not know what our industry's like. So it helps reach those people that might be trying to figure out what they want for dinner tonight. They're writing that article um, that the housewife might read or the single dad might read tonight. And he's trying to figure out what he's going to do after the soccer game tonight for dinner. Um, so it helps us reach out to those people that might not know what our industry is, but they're beef consumers and that's who we want to reach. Before dinner, there was a beef cutting demonstration that showed how the chefs are working to find new ways to present beef to their customers. I never actually cut a piece from scratch there, so that was interesting to watch. I learned that some of the more delicate beef that they had available was really awesome and, and it can be more, as somebody was talking to me earlier said, uh, delicate and uh, have a bit of finesse to it. The cutting demonstration was so cool. We actually are wanting to make our own charcuterie and salami at home. So hearing about how he's doing it was really interesting. Chefs from the Brennan family of restaurants created and presented each course. As each plate was set down, the food bloggers focused their cameras and phones to share the images and their comments on social media. In recent years, the influence of these bloggers has grown, reaching tens of thousands of consumers looking for recipe ideas. I like the taste of beef. It's awesome. It's probably my favorite protein. It's versatile. You can put it in probably anything. In different types of recipes and foods, and it's worldwide. It's, it's an awesome protein. I love getting to know the locals that host the event. I love getting to know the people behind the association. And, um, you know, it's just a constant learning process. So, you know, it's fun to channel ways about, you know, they help me learn and I, I, I learn from them about different um, techniques like we watched tonight with the, you know, the beef cutting. I love coming to events like this because it really inspires me, gives me some new ideas. I love seeing how the beef is prepared and how different chefs are using it in restaurants that I can take and make into a version that people at home can make maybe a little bit easier but with the same cuts of beef. In addition to dining on great beef dishes, the bloggers also got a sneak preview of the checkoff funded Chuck Knows Beef, an interactive new way for consumers to get fast answers to common questions about buying and preparing beef. Learn more about how beef goes from pasture to plate at beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Eating beef is a nutritional part of everyone's diet. And to see it cut and to see what I produce on the farm and ranch each and every day 
up in front of me and to these bloggers and these influencers, just it, it just stirs something up with you and as a producer, it makes you want to just keep doing what we do each and every day. So it makes me proud to say, Beef, it's what's for dinner. At the New Orleans Beef Pop-Up Restaurant event, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Still to come on Cattleman to Cattleman, we'll take you inside another pop-up event, this time in Kentucky, that highlights how the checkoff and NCBA work to build beef demand. Stay with us. We'll be right back. They're here. They're hungry. And they can't be stopped with ivermectin alone. Add Safeguard when you deworm your cattle to take out resistant parasites like brown stomach worm, cuperia, nematodirus, and others. With two dewormers from two different classes, you can kill more resistant worms in your cattle, so you don't leave potential on the table. Consult your veterinarian for the diagnosis and treatment of parasitism. Then bite back at safeguardworks.com. Join the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. NCBA is the oldest cattle industry organization, working every day to defend your interests in Washington, D.C. And there are big benefits to being a member. You'll get news you can use in the National Cattlemen and policy updates from Beltway Beef, plus big discounts from John Deere, Cabela's, and more great partners. Join now. Call 866-233-3872 or sign up online at ncba.org. Recently, NCBA's Federation of State Beef Councils partnered with the Kentucky Beef Council to host a Beef It's What's for Dinner pop-up event, this time in Louisville, Kentucky. The event, funded in part by beef checkoff dollars, celebrated beef while bringing together food influencers from around the country. And as Brian Baxter reports, this event truly provided a connection between farm and fork. Kentucky Farm Country was the setting, and renowned chef Joshua Moore of Valare Restaurant was the host for a Beef It's What's For Dinner pop-up event that brought together food influencers from around the country. We know that consumers get their information from a lot of different sources, and one of those trusted sources is food influencers. So we know it's really important to work with food influencers and build relationships with them. We send money to the Federation to support programs like this, uh, in particular uh, where we can do kind of a regional type of, type of uh, effort uh, because something like this in our state might be a little expensive for us as a budget um, and so this allows us to be able to bring multiple states together, uh, not only to do this but also to bring influencers because they like to meet other people um, and, and make networks so this is a great opportunity for them. So by using those different state beef council investments from around the country we ultimately were able to bring bloggers from Kentucky area but we also have some bloggers from outside of Kentucky, a couple from Utah, a couple from Ohio, other areas of the country uh, where we've really just brought them together for this once in a lifetime experience. Before dinner, there was an opportunity for the bloggers and food influencers to gather and learn about the long bourbon heritage in Kentucky. Then the group moved out to the country for the main event, dinner at Chef Joshua Moore's own farm. We are hosting a great event at the farm tonight for NCBA. Uh, it's all bourbon and beef oriented, um, as well as produce from our very own farm. Uh, and I'm excited about the menu. I've got beef worked into every course. Uh, we're doing a gazpacho with beef, a caprese salad with beef, and then of course tomahawk ribeyes for the entree. Even, even using beef tallow in the bittersweet chocolate cake at the end of the meal. I would say what's really impressive is the gathering of chefs, farmers, cattlemen, all coming together to talk about our nutrition, our health, to create some wonderful, delicious uh, dishes for us. Uh, that's just been really neat, especially to be here on the farm. Besides the creative menu and the chance to visit with a well-known chef, the influencers also heard from and then enjoyed dinner with beef producers who were ready to share their story and talk about all things beef. Uh, what's been happening tonight has been just wonderful and amazing uh, to interact with some of the big Instagram and foodies and talking to them about beef and why it's great. And it's been so fun watching them ask questions about how beef is raised, grown, and cooked. You've got three producers here, you know, a cattle feeder and cow-calf person and whatnot, and 
I mean, they can talk to us, they can ask us questions. You don't convince anybody, they, you know, they, they uh, have to draw their own conclusion, but you gotta get in front of them and, and have the shot. So there'll be a lot of these people here that leave here with a, with a really good positive uh, idea of what beef and beef production is about. I'm a beef eater. I love steak. I love brisket. I love hamburger. And to hear where it's coming from, uh, the strides that they're taking to make sure that's sustainable and healthy for us, I think it's important for all of us. Now I've seen the love, the families, and the information that goes behind it, where it's coming from, and the passion that really has been around in the United States for raising beef and making good, healthy, nutritious meal for families, which perfectly aligns with what we want to do on our website. Throughout the evening, as each of the five courses reached the table, cameras were focused on the chef's creations, so the images and the experiences could be shared on social media with followers everywhere. Yeah, you're definitely going to see a lot of photos of the food. That is really our goal tonight, is to share food information, particularly beef, of course. Beef fits so perfectly into our lifestyle these days. I, I think everyone kind of has gotten a little bit confused about food. Everyone's not sure what to make anymore because there's so much information out there, they feel overloaded. But here's the thing, beef offers you nutritious dinners every night that you can pull together. It's good for you. You can eat it often. You don't have to be worried about that. And more importantly, it, it really is good for this rising generation. They need proper nutrients and it tastes dang good. So what more could you ask for? So that's really the value of doing these types of events. With previous events that we've hosted, we've actually been able to reach nearly a million people in one single night, which is otherwise reach that we wouldn't have for beef and for beef it's what's for dinner and for the beef farmers and ranchers that we represent. Pop-up events like this are just one way the Federation of State Beef Councils through the Beef Checkoff is working to help grow beef demand. In Kentucky, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Remember, to find out more about events like this one and to see great beef recipes, visit the Checkoff funded website, beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Still ahead on this special edition of Cattlemen to Cattlemen, find out about a program at the University of Nebraska that's giving students the tools they need to start their own ag related businesses. Stay with us, we'll be right back. As a stocker operator, your job is to turn forage into profit. With the right implant, you can. Revlor G improves grazing performance for 150 days, the same length as the typical grazing period. And it's dosed for stockers' maturity levels, adding up to an extra 23 pounds. See why Revlor G is the number one choice in stocker implants at RevlorG.com. A withdrawal period has not been established in pre-ruminating calves. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. Are you concerned about the impact government policies could have on your cattle business? One way to make your voice heard in Washington is by joining NCBA. When you join, you'll have access to key policy updates and insights from Beltway Beef. It's the best way to hear directly from NCBA's DC team. Beltway Beef provides valuable policy information and it's free for NCBA members. Stay in touch with Beltway Beef. Join now at ncba.org. We all know deciding what to do after graduation is one of the toughest choices a person has to make. But what if you had a job waiting for you and it was for a company you created? Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Russell Nemitz has more on a college program designed to help students gain valuable experience starting and running their own ag-related businesses. Inside Miller Hall on the University of Nebraska campus, a group of students is meeting to discuss the pros and cons of a new business idea. They're all part of the Angler Agribusiness Entrepreneurship Program, which helps undergrads develop the skills they need to start their own businesses. The Angler Program is really the vision and dream of a guy well known in the cattle business, Paul Angler, who is a native Nebraskan. He built this extraordinary company called Cactus Feeders. Uh, and as Paul reached uh, his zenith years, he wanted to make an investment in the future. And he thought the best way to do that was to create a program that would, in fact, empower uh, successive generations of people to buy into the notion of free enterprise that 
in fact, people can build companies, that they can be the captain of their own ship. So the mission of the Angler Program is very simple. Our mission is to embolden our people to courageously pursue their purpose through the art and science of entrepreneurship. Those free spirits and um, do-it-myselfers and um, I'd rather work 80 for myself than 40 for somebody else kind of folks. And the good news is in Nebraska, you find them um, in some quantity. At one time, Dr. Tom Field was the director of producer education at NCBA. Now he's in charge of the Angler program. He knows this isn't your traditional college course. Gone are the old classroom staples like textbooks, lectures, and quizzes. We're actually a, a band of pirates trying to disrupt higher education. We believe that in light of the technology, the tools, the knowledge that this generation has at their very fingertips, the old school way of sitting in rows and rote memorization, those days are gone and so we've left them behind. It's a really unique program because you're able to um, get the hands-on experience, actually start the building of the business and have some great mentors here along the way to help you in that process. And then as I progress, progressed and I actually started my own company and things kind of started taking off, they have really allowed me to basically take credit for um, running my business. You look at education a little bit differently. You actually research things not because you're trying to get a grade, but because it's, it's important to the viability and the success of your business that you're starting. You know, and I, I see um, Angler really being the leader of not just business education being taught this way, but all education um, down the road. Dozens of students are taking advantage of the Engler program. Before joining, many were running companies in their spare time between classes. Now they have a place to go where they can focus on their business while getting college credit. Plus, they get a chance to interact with like-minded individuals who often work together to develop business ideas. That's one of the great aspects of the Engler program is that so many motivated 20, 21 year olds come together and really develop a, a group together and push each other. But also when one person succeeds, it's definitely something to look up to and something to, to motivate yourself to do. These Nebraska students know a brilliant idea could lead to a lucrative business. The goal of the Angler Agribusiness Entrepreneurship Program is to give them the skills and resources they need to make it happen thinking about what I want to do after college, even still as a junior, it's definitely scary and I really don't know. But with this entrepreneurship venture that I'm on and the ways that the Engler program has empowered me, um, it's really cool to see that I might be able to be an entrepreneur directly out of college. Hopefully I can grow my business enough to have um, a career ready for me after graduation. But if that doesn't happen and I need to work for another employer for a while, then I'll still have these innovative thinking skills and really be able to be a self-starter, which employers enjoy. The status quo of um, com coming to the university is you go to the university to get a degree and then get a job right after. And so uh, that's really what the Engler program helped me with, was realize that you don't have to follow the status quo of just getting a job after school. You can actually start your own business in college, which, which I did, um, and they've really helped me propel that forward. We're creating a generation of people, and, and, and certainly out of our program, young people who know that they can take the helm, that it's okay to imagine big, to, to aspire, to pour their uh, heart and soul into something and to make a difference. We're deeply committed to changing um, the trajectory for rural America, and we think it starts here, and we think we found the right people to make that come true. Reporting from the University of Nebraska campus, I'm Russell Nimitz for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To find out more about the Engler Agribusiness Entrepreneurship Program or to check out some of the different companies started by students, visit their University of Nebraska webpage at engler.unl.edu. Still ahead, it's time for a visit with our good friend, Baxter Black. Stay with us, we'll be right back. All across the nation, ranchers are feeling the effects of immune system challenges in more than one in five of their weaned calves. It's a frustrating, costly journey. But help is on the way. Purina starter feeds, 
Now with RX3 immune support technology, it boosts calves' natural defenses, priming their immune systems from the start. Join the fight and talk to your Purina rep to learn more. Did you know that Prefert makes over a thousand different farm, ranch, and rodeo items? And now, thanks to Prefert Direct, it's easier than ever before to get access to every item Prefert makes delivered direct to your local dealer. For more information about Prefert Direct, visit us at prefert.com. Prefert, America's number one name in farm, ranch, and rodeo. Still looking for entertainment at your county fair or rodeo? Baxter's latest, a continuous five hours of Baxter, which is me, on film from Johnny Carson, Iowa Public TV. Elko, hang your screen anywhere on the fairgrounds you want a crowd. The barn, the bar, the tent, the 4-H room, even the arena, 125 bucks. Baxter Black Cowboy Theater, 800-654-2550, baxterblack.com. If farmers were a race, we'd be a minority smaller than the national left-handed Americans for a fair shake. So I'm thinking there must be more opportunities for farmers to elevate our reputation. Harold Krishna has adopt a heifer. The BLM has adopt a Mustang. Freeways have adopt a mile. How about adopt a farmer? We could have a spin-off of the dating game. Three farmers could sit behind a curtain while a real American consumer could ask questions of, say, a sheep herder and a corn farmer and a horse whisperer. Which one of you enjoys long walks, can cook mutton, and appreciates privacy? Pick me, pick me, I'm down there on the end. I'm a guy in a wool coat. Ah, 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 ah. Do any of you enjoy long winters by the fire and a good book? Well, if you mean by the shop, I spent a lot of time there in the winter. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did read a book one time, Golfing for Dummies. <laughs> Pick me. Okay. I have a very nice horse property, but I need someone to listen to me. Ma'am, uh, does that come with a credit card too? I think we can eliminate the cowboy. And maybe as a means of impressing the urban majority, we can hold our own American Farmer Idol. As a matter of fact, a virtual Farmer Idol contest was held by the Delmarva Peninsulites and the finalists included A, a soybean farmer who sculpts tofu, B, a sheep producer who can knit their wool into the shape of a coyote while they're still unshorn, and or a chicken farmer who put Tabasco sauce in his pullet feed to stimulate hot wings. But the winner was an Illinois River fish farmer who invented the Asian carp cake, carp legs, the carp apple tree, and even carp grass for your lawn. His theme song was, I've got carps, you've got carps, everybody's got the carps. It was actually his second attempt at winning the American farmer idol. He tried the year before when he was a crab fisherman in Maryland, but he was disqualified when the judges heard his theme song. This is Baxter Black from out there. Thanks, Baxter. We always enjoy our visits with you each and every week. Now, one reason to become an NCBA member is the chance to read the National Cattleman. It's the official publication of NCBA and provides timely news and articles about the issues and events affecting the beef industry. A subscription is included free of charge when you become an NCBA member. Just call 866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org. We're back with more right after this. Stay with us. Now a BQA tip from the Beef Quality Assurance Program. With uh, Beef Quality Assurance and the Beef Quality Assurance Transportation Program, it's very important that we understand the importance that transportation plays in our industry. Every animal, when we think uh, from the time it's born until we get to a processing facility or harvest facility, 
those animals have at least probably been in transit at least one time in their life, if not multiple times. And so that stress plays a big part on how these animals react and perform, no matter at what stage they're in. And so if we can work with our transporters to understand the importance of how they operate and how they manage their trucks, biosecurity, think about those times of year where we have weather extremes, whether it be heat or cold, and how they can manage that to implement different practices to eliminate those additional risks is so important to us in the industry. They are a major part of what we do, and so we have to keep encouraging you to keep managing those pieces and understanding the stress while in transit and try to mitigate whatever we can to eliminate any risk. Find out more about beef quality assurance at bqa.org. Welcome back. We're wrapping up the show with legacy photos as we share some great shots submitted by our viewers. Let's have a look. Want to see your photo on Cattlemen to Cattlemen? You can submit your favorite shots a couple of ways. Either message them to us on the Cattlemen to Cattlemen Facebook page or email them to c2c at beef.org. Include your ranch or farm name and your hometown and we may use them on a future episode. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks so much for spending time with us. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.